So Lucio Fulcimo is to strap in for a lot of gore and some incoherence. The Beyond was released in 1981 as the second movie in the Gates of Hell trilogy, all directed by Lucio Fulci. Oh, and don't worry if you haven't seen City of the Dead, the first one in the franchise, because they don't really connect. We follow Lisa, a New Yorker who inherited a hotel in Louisiana. This hotel is shown in the opening scene was the setting of a murder. We learn a warlock stayed in the room 36 where a mom murdered him because they found out the hotel was built over one of the seven gates of hell and he was going to do some bad shit about that or something. I don't know. It's not really clear. He also had a book labeled the Ebon. The book of Ebon wasn't created for this movie. Instead, it self-links to H.P. Lovecraft stories of related subjects. It's basically a cultist book with over 4,000 years of prophecies. That's the most coherent story you're going to get, because from here on out, it's only going to get more Fulci. Owner of the Hotel Lisa is also played by Catriona McCall, who is in all three of the films, also plays a different character in every one. The painter she hires here gets spooked seeing some blind woman's face somehow, and he falls off the roof. The doc stops by and ends up becoming a main character, who comes and checks up on Lisa regularly. She runs into this blind lady, Emily, with her dog, Dickie. Emily warns her of the history of the hotel, but she doesn't believe it. Lisa ignores her warnings and goes into room 36, where she finds the evil book and a dead dude nailed to the wall. This freaks her out, and the local doc just happens to be stopping by to check up on her, but she tries to show her, and the body in the book have disappeared. He also tells her that there's no blind woman in town, I guess. More bodies pile up. The plumber gets his eye ripped out in the basement by a wall zombie. His wife goes to see his body at the hospital where a random jar of acid pours onto her face and her daughter just watches her last parent die, I guess. Pretty brutal. This kill is a real standout here because they used real acid on a clay face and it melts away revealing layers made to mimic a real face. Very realistic and the story stops to linger on it for a while. The little girl ends up getting these demon eyes and having gone blind. Speaking of the blind, the undead visit Emily's house. And uh, she pretty much pleads with them not wanting to go back or something. I guess she'd, she's seen hell before and she's not trying to go back. But Dickie turns on her, violently ripping at her throat and ripping her ear off. And we get this great kill. And then we get to move on to more zombies and bodies. Doc happens to find the book of Ebon and recruits with Lisa in the Seven Doors Hotel. Where the hell just opens up or something. It's a little ridiculous. But again, it's a Fulci movie. So take the ride in here for a second. The two leave the hotel as the dead come to life. And the gate seemingly opens up. They go to the hospital for a gun and the coronary who's seen all the other corpses at this point. But glass shatters and it kills them. Because sure, why not? And a million undead corner them. They find the little girl in the hospital for some reason. And she eventually turns on them. And the doc has to blow her goddamn head open. They're cornered by an endless stream of the undead. He learns he has to shoot for the head and proceeds to forget that three times over, Nightmare City style. They end up going to the basement, which somehow caused them to end up in the basement of the Seven Doors Hotel. There, they flee into another room that I think is supposed to be the painting from earlier in the movie that the warlock had. Not really sure, but that's what I think it's supposed to be. They've realized they're trapped there seemingly forever, and their eyes turn demonic and blind or something. Is this hell? Is this limbo? Is it the actual painting? Who knows? On paper, The Beyond is an incoherent mess. When you watch it, the film is a Fulci masterpiece, accompanied by a haunting soundtrack that is so specific to this movie, the stream of kills, all very gory and sometimes eyeball related. The Beyond is an Italian horror classic. The music is perfect in the film, coming in with impeccable timing and, and has this eerie sound to it, unlike no other film. It adds the almost a range atmosphere. Like I said, there's a streamline of kills. The warlock in the beginning is whipped with a chain and nailed to the wall. Joe the plumber gets his eye ripped out. Joe's wife gets acid to the face. One of the caretakers of the hotel is found dead in the basement. Another one gets her head thrown onto a nail coming out the other side of her eye in a really well edited scored scene. Lisa's assistant gets his face chewed off by demon tarantulas in a scene that again just stops the film to linger and in a very effective way. Plus an endless horde of zombies and... Glass in the face, Rolex fucking on my eyes. And our leads are even damned to die, I guess. This film is an iconic venture and has the only two buildings in Louisiana with a basement. David Warbeck, who played the doc, would die two weeks after they wrapped filming due to a cancer battle. Sad to say, he was never able to see the love this film would eventually garnish. The Beyond was hated by critics upon its release, but quickly built a cult following that rocketed itself to a classic status. The original cut of the movie was never even released in the States until the late 90s, thanks to Grindhouse, and the film is also known as Seven Doors of Death, and that version would to be found and partially restored with an alternate soundtrack. The Beyond isn't coherent for a reason. Fulci told the world the film has no structure, no complete script, no shooting schedule. They just shot the cool scenes and kills Fulci wanted to make, and he and his group of writers worked the world around these scenes as they could. It makes for an esoteric acid trip story. The undead invasion climax being made due to the strength of zombie. Fulci's invested in one to play off that, and the rest of the movie was just left for him to do what he wanted. 
that he did. I think it makes for one of the greatest Italian horror films of all time. It's a stream of consciousness in the face of some great horror. Characters go blind to the presence of their perceived hell. Emily knows the inner workings of the story, gone blind due to being corrupt from her journey to hell and back. The little girl is the sense of corruption. Her whole family is killed before her. Left in a cold world alone with no journey, she stumbles away from the path of faith and corrupts by the sight of hell. And our leads are at an unexpected end that they could never have accounted for, trapped forever in their own slice of hell. Personally, I see it as a perfect film, perfect for what it is. It hits every bell and acts in a way that is very different from any linear story, a fantastical ride. The film before in the franchise is very similar in that it is incoherent at times, but less of a stream of consciousness and more plotted out. The third film, House by the Cemetery, is a lot more straightforward and it has a linear story. To wrap up, The Beyond is a known video nasty and a wild ride with lots of eyeball poking, bloody faces, goopy gore, Fabio Fizzi's killer soundtrack, Italian incoherence, blinding peers into the gates of hell, and a random caretaker panty raid. What are you doing in my room? I was looking for keys. And you will face the sea of darkness and all therein that may be explored. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you aren't already, drop a little subscription down below. Make sure you stay tuned because every day in the month of October, I'm dropping a different horror movie review. Uh, I believe they come at 7 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. And uh, so keep an eye out for that. And then every week, every other week uh, throughout October, there's a bonus comic video still coming up. I still want to make sure there's still some combo content on the channel. And then throughout the rest of the year, there's combo content every single week, one to two times a week. Plus, I do the YouTube shorts where I post stuff on there every day. I got the Instagram. I got the Facebook. I got the, the Facebook group fans unleashed where you get a behind the scenes look at the the you know, whole channel, everything, Connors Comics, the whole company, all that kind of stuff. So all, all that is linked down in the description below. And again, make sure you subscribe. Keep an eye out for updating daily videos. And uh, until next time, peace.